Okay, let us now discuss the characteristics of criminal law. So we have three characteristics of criminal law. We have general, territorial, and prospective. So it is very easy to tell which is which because when we say general, it answers the question who. And territorial, it answers the question where. And prospective, it answers the question when. So let us first take up general. So the general rule under general characteristic of criminal law is that it is obligatory. Ibig sabihin, lahat ay obligadong sumunod. No? That is why in the definition, all who live or sojourn in the Philippine territory. Pag sinabing live, ito ay applicable sa Filipino citizen. Pag sinabing sojourn, that is about temporary stay in a particular place. That applies to foreigners. So, whether Filipino citizen or foreigners, all are obliged under the law. And if there is any violation of the law, all have to answer. So, that is the general rule. But in every rule, there is an exception. So that is subject to the principles of treaty stipulations, law of preferential application, and public international law. So ito yung mga exceptions, treaty stipulations, laws of preferential application, public international law. Let us uh, take this up one by one. So unahin natin ang treaty stipulations. What does it mean pag sinabing treaty? So accordingly, there is a formal written agreement between two or more nations. So in other words, it is an agreement, but that is with more particularity, agreement between two or more countries. So this is between nations or among nations. And when we say stipulations, that is a provision in a document or agreement specifying something that is agreed to. So, these are specifics of the agreement. So, in other words, treaty stipulations are the specifics of the agreement between and among nations. So, a good example to treaty stipulations is military basis agreement. So, meron tayong ganitong agreement between the U.S. and the Philippines. Under this U.S. RP basis agreement, all U.S. servicemen stationed in the Philippines and committing a crime in the performance of their duties are exempted from criminal prosecution. Another example is Visiting Forces Accord. Ito yung mga agreement between our country and the U.S. Okay, so any U.S. servicemen stationed in the Philippines while having the military exercises or in the performance of duty as U.S. servicemen exempted sila sa criminal prosecution so long as the crime committed is in line with the performance of duty. Now, let's Proceed to the next, the loss of preferential application. Pag sinabing prefer, the root word prefer, ang ibig sabihin niyan is to choose. Makita na natin, pag sinabing preferential application, merong pagpipili sa pag-apply sa watas. So, mabalikan natin na under the general characteristics of criminal law, Lahat ay obligado, whether Filipino citizen or foreigners are obliged under the law and have to answer any crime in violation of the law. These are laws of preferential application. So we have the first one, Republic Act Number no. 75. Republic Act Number no. 75 is penalizing acts impairing proper observance of immunities. When we say immunities, 
they cannot be prosecuted or there is non-prosecution for any crime being committed. Right and privileges of the duly accredited foreign diplomatic and consular agents in the Philippines. So persons exempted are public ministers, ambassadors, and domestic servants of ambassadors and public ministers. While ang public ministers, ang ambassadors, pati na ang kanilang domestic servants, mga kasambahay, kung nandito sila sa Pilipinas as part of their tour of duty, they cannot be prosecuted for a crime they committed. For whatever crime, because the law does not give any specifics. Of course, uh, there is a condition there that in the case of domestic servants, of ambassadors and public ministers, they have to be registered in the Department of Foreign Affairs as domestic servants of ambassadors and public ministers. Ang pinag-usapan dito ha, public ministers, ambassadors ng ibang bansa na na-assign dito sa Pilipinas. Ang immunity na to ay ibibigay lamang kung ang bansa nila, the country of origin of public ministers, ambassadors, and domestic servants, provide the same exemptions to public ministers and ambassadors and including their domestic servants stationed in their country. Next, worship rule. Worship of another country is considered as an extension of the territory of the country, even if that in the Philippines. So, ano ang worship? Ito yung barkong pandigma pagmamayari ng isang bansa. So, kahit saan man ito nakadaong, whatever crime na makumit doon sa loob ng barko, ang prosecution yan, sa krimi na yan, ay sa country of origin. Bakit? Because ito ay considered as extension of the territory of another country or of the country. So, meaning to say, ang country na nagmamayari ng worship. Okay, ang application ng worship rule, hindi lang siya patungkol sa worship. Applicable din siya sa airship na pagmamayari ng gobyerno and then embassy. That is why kung may krimen na nangyari sa loob ng embassy ng US dito sa Pilipinas, walang pakialam ang Philippines. Bakit? Because sa loob ng compound ng embassy, yan ay tinatawag na extension of the territory of the US. The same holds true kung may embassy tayo doon sa US, sa compound ng embassy, yan ay considered na territory ng Pilipinas. That is why, kung may krimen na nangyari doon sa compound ng embassy, ang krimen ay i-prosecute dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? So, that is about worship rule.